Hey everybody, welcome to Infantry Outdoors. I'm DJ Infantry, the Blind Sniper, back at it, welcoming you to a Friday night live stream here in beautiful North Florida. Hope wherever you are around the world, you are having an amazing day. Let me kick this camera a little bit more to the left. There we go. And, um, hope you're having a great night, and I hope that you're safe, sound, and well, wherever you are around the world. Tonight our broadcast is brought to you and sponsored in part by Silver Connections Group. Whether you are looking to get your social media rank boosted, your Google rankings boosted, you need a new website, or hey, you just want to get some business done, give my friends at Silver Connections Group a call or check them out at the information linked in all of our videos and of course at infantryoutdoors.com. And also water purification products. If you're looking to get water, the pure life, the pure water at your fingertips, let my friends at water purification products take care of all of that for you. All the information is linked in our videos and, of course, on our website at infantryoutdoors.com. So I hope you guys have had a great week. Section 8 Outdoors, how you doing, buddy? I um, hope you had a great week, my friend. I'm going to give you a drink here in a second. Let me... See if I go like that, if that's better. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. It's not killing me. <laughs> Mike says, oh, look, you're alive. Yeah, I'm alive. My buddy Mike, Tactical that's Tech, came and gave me a phone call. Appreciate the love, brother. So listen, what I got tonight, <clears throat> tonight's drink, what we're going to start doing, uh, if you guys missed the last broadcast, is we're going to start doing drinks. And if you want to get your channel... To sponsor the drink of the night, and your channel will basically be the sponsor of a broadcast, then all you got to do is send a bottle donation to the PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash Infantry Outdoors. Uh, we already have one donation, which I will tell you guys about in the upcoming future, because I have it scheduled so that that person can be here when we have that bottle. But if you have something that you would like for us to try on a Friday night while we're doing the live stream... You can be a channel sponsor tonight. I don't have one, so the channel sponsor is me. And I came up with, this is a pina colada. I don't know if you guys can relate to how big this cup is. That's my hand. All right. Uh, I started a little before the broadcast. Tonight is Sailor Jerry's with some pina colada mix. It's kind of good. <laughs> pina colada mix is kind of on the cheap side. But, guys, if you want to be a channel sponsor, um, you want to donate a bottle, go to PayPal, leave the amount. Tell me what you want me to uh, buy, and we'll go out to the liquor store. We'll pick it up, and, yeah, we'll go from there. So, Shannon. happy Friday, everybody. Swamp Stalker Outdoors, Section 8 Outdoors, and Tactical Technician. Happy Friday, family. Love you guys. Glad you're doing great. May God richly bless each and all of every one of your families. Cheers. Now, I can't do big ones on this because it's heavy on the room, so cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. problem is it tastes so good so as you guys can tell in the background behind me the reason we didn't broadcast last friday was because we got new furniture um and we weren't able to broadcast because our normal area now has furniture in it so we had to go back to the old school way of the camera and the producers over here on the laptop doing it up the old school way so what are you over there you're laughing about mike said did you say you're drinking a penis salada? Yeah, penis salada. Penis salada. So, guys, tonight's topic, boat safety. Um, I really do want to wait for Rob to get in here before we get started because he's going to be the start of the conversation. If you guys don't know, we're going to wait for a uh, good old shiner guy to make it in tonight. Hope you guys are doing great. Shannon, bro, hope you're having a great one, man. Uh, but like I said, we didn't broadcast last Friday because we got furniture. Uh, we actually got a bar. We got this couch. We got a recliner, uh, we got these lights, these tables, we got chairs for the outside patio, uh, we got a fire pit for the outside patio that runs on propane, uh, it got an 85 inch LED TV for the bedroom and a fire, uh, fake fire pit, or fire fireplace pits. stand for it to go on. So we had a busy week, uh, plus I've been working on building a bench, um, out of wood and staining it and everything like that too so it's been a busy week that's why i haven't had time to do no videos because uh life's been occupying me there you know we still needed some things up here 
and we would slowly be getting and acquiring them. So, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like so, boat safety, don't fall in. Yeah, boat safety. Tip number one, don't fall in. Uh, no. <laughs> there's many more that are just as important. Yeah, there's a lot more. I mean, really, the big thing of it is to start off boat safety before you buy a boat, before you um, jump into that kind of thing. That world. I would do your homework. First of all, what do you want to fish? Do you want to fish salt water? Do you want to fish fresh water? Do you want to fish both salt and fresh water, which is what we started off doing? Um, where do you want to go? How far do you want to go? What type of fishing are you looking to do? Are you going to tournament fish? Or are you going to just fish for fun? Uh, do you want to tow an inner tube? Do you want to just cruise with the wife, get drunk, and have a good time? You know, these are all things to consider. Do you want to take the grandkids out and barbecue? Um, because that will determine what kind of boat you're going to get. But above all, you need to take a boat or safety course. Can't tell you how much that helps to have the knowledge because, yeah, you could drive a car, but you had to take a license and you had to learn the road signs and you had to learn who has the right of way. You had to learn, uh, you know, things like that. Well, on the water, the water is basically waterways. They are roadways. So therefore, they have their own laws. They have their own speed zones. They have their own conditions. They have everything, you know. They have things called locks where they will raise you up or bring you down depending on where you are. Um, so there's a lot of different things, you know, a lot of interesting <laughs> things that you need to do your homework on before you ever set foot into a boat. But the boater safety course will give you the idea of what channel markers are, uh, what morning buoys are, what, you know, areas you're not supposed to be in, where you can't go, that sort of thing. I seen it pop up in red. What was going on? Coyote says hi, and he says, don't put the plug in the wrong hole. We're getting to that. I'm waiting on Rob. <laughs> I'm waiting on friggin' Shiner guy. Coyote, cheers, brother. Happy Friday. Uh, again, if anybody wants to be the channel sponsor for next week or whenever, uh, for Friday night, and you want to donate a bottle, please let us know in the comments if you do donate to our PayPal uh, what you want us to get with your donation. Um, your beverage of choice. Your beverage of choice. Like, you got to tell us you want to, hey, I sent you the money for a Dr. Pepper and this. Or, hey, I sent you the money for uh, a Kahlua and Bailey's. Or, you know, whatever it might be. Just make sure you put it in the comments. But cheers, Kyle. Happy Friday, brother. I'm glad you hope you're having a good one, man. I really do. Mike says, don't sink your boat. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Have a great night. Quick, simple, and out the door, right, Mike? But, yeah, there's a lot to it, guys, when you get your first boat, all right? Don't be ignorant. Don't be one of the people that just go out, buy a boat, and whoosh, Bob's your uncle, and go out and think you know every damn thing. That's how you get people hurt. That's how you get hurt. Um, I've seen it plenty of times down in Miami. These kids take out mommy and daddy's expensive boats, have no idea what the water ways are. Have no idea where the sandbars are, when low tide, high tide, what any of that means. And I've seen it t time and time again, they wrecked the boat. So we've seen celebrities hit pilings of uh, on jet skis. We've seen so much, it's, it's not um, No, funny. they hit the jetties. Going so the jetties. keep in mind, wherever you're going to go will determine on what boat you're going to get. But do yourself the favor and take your boat or safety course for your area. Uh, ours in Florida send you a little card that actually does show something if you do get pulled over and you hand that to them, it's a lot better than if you don't hand it to them, but it's not going to, like, do much. It is going to show them that you are knowledgeable, and if you did make a mistake, you're owning up to it. Um, next tip I'm going to tell you on a boat is as the captain of the boat, you are 110% responsible for everything on the boat, in the boat, around the boat, in the coolers, uh, in your passengers, on your passengers and all that stuff so keep that in mind too uh also in the state of florida i don't know about where you guys live again you look into local laws that by owning a boat and putting it on the water you automatically may are you automatically are subject to search the boat and seizure so they pull you over they are allowed to automatically come aboard your vessel no matter what and search your vessel so Better just not to do anything wrong, and, you know, if you're the captain, don't be drunk, and don't be, you know, piss-ass drunk at the, at the sandbar. You're responsible, and you're responsible for those on your boat, 
as well as you're responsible for your own lives and all that other sort of stuff. So, I think the best safety tip is don't go out on the holidays. Oh, and don't go out on the holidays. Screw that. Unless you're going like where we used to go out, you go out to the Everglades where nobody's out there but you and the alligators, then don't go out on the waters on the holidays. You know, that's just another little piece of advice for you guys. So, mm -hmm. so I like to push them in the water. Who's is that? Mike. Mike likes to push him in the water. <laughs> but yeah, those are two points to start off with. And uh, I'm still waiting to see when our good old, I put the plug in the wrong hole guy will get here. Um, put the butt plug in the wrong hole. Mm. Yeah, my friends. So yeah, um, what else can I tell you guys before we get into that now? Uh, the next thing is going to be, will be your boat selection. Obviously, we'll just say, for example... You want to go bass fishing, so you're going to buy a bass boat. You're going to buy something to bass fish in. You're going to buy a bass tracker. You're going to buy a John boat. You're going to buy, hell, we started off with a 10-foot uh, inflatable Zodiac, and we took it in the Everglades. We took it in the ocean. We took it in the intercoastal. We took that little badass boat everywhere. <laughs> um, and then we moved up to a 17-foot jet boat that was just pure fast. It was just made to go fast and go to the sandbar and my wife in a little skimpy bikinis and lay out on the deck and drag us around in the inner tube. It was only a three-seater bench, so it wasn't like you could take, take a lot of people. And then, um, you know, we'd inner tube in it and all this and other stuff. Then she says, oh, guess what? I'm pregnant. Oh, great. So how long are you going to be able to do this for? She did it till literally she couldn't fit behind the wheel no more. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we had that. Then we got a cabin cruiser. And the cabin, the Cuddy Cabin Cruiser was basically just that. And it was a way to continue to saltwater fish and be out on the water with a little baby um, and still enjoy the life that we were loving. But, you know, whatever boat you're going to get, make sure that it's right for the conditions. Make sure you're getting the right boat. Uh, don't waste your money buying something that you think you want because it looks cool. Buy the boat that you need to get to do what you want to do. So... If you want to go bass fishing, buy a bass boat, buy a John boat, buy a flipping kayak. Them, them, them damn things get places where boats can't, not even bass boats can't. So keep that in mind, too. Are you going to fish skinny water? Are you going to fish offshore? Um, a lot of things to consider. But this is all part of boat safety because if you buy the wrong boat and try to do the wrong activity, it's going to be a bad day. So, Any comments from the peanut gallery? I mean, the chat, I don't even see the chat moving over here, so... Guys, what's going on? Um, am I right or wrong in this department? What do you guys think? So once you have your boat, the next thing you're going to want to do is go stem to stern. You're going to want to know that boat inside and out. You're going you're gonna to want to know where every uh, hole in the back of the boat goes and what it's for. You're going to want to know, <laughs> right, Mr. Shiner Guy? I'm going to keep referring to you, Shiner Guy. You want to know where to put your butt plug. You want to know where your intake is, where your drain out is for your live well, your intake for your live well. Where is your outflow for your bilge pumps? Where are your bilge pumps located? Do they have a float switch or is the float switch built into the bilge system? These are all things that you need to know on the boat for sure. And then you can get into where your compartments are, what the hell they can hold, uh, your batteries, your gasoline, your switches for those. If there are switches... If you have rocker switches to go from battery A to battery B, um, depending on how you're set up, know your boat inside and out before you ever hit the water. Fl play with all your switches. What does this do? What does that do? I did say butt plug. That's what we call it anyway. <laughs> it's actually called a bung, B-U-N-G, a bung plug. But butt plug just works. Put it in the butt bung of the boat. <laughs> I am bung holio. <laughs> oh, my Friday family. Cheers again, guys. It's been a week, let me tell you. But, uh, yeah, we got couches now. Yeah, <laughs> no more sitting on the floor watching TV. But, um, so yeah, let's go back to boat safety now. So you got your boat, you've been through your boat, you know what every switch does, you know what every single light how to run the lights, how to run the live well, how to run your bilge. Um, you're going to get yourself into a routine so that when you go out on the boat, 
Load up your boat. You put all your crap in your boat. Okay, it says most places have a list of uh, safety stuff that you have to have in a boat. And if you don't, they stop you and you will get to go talk to the judge. Correct, and we're, I was just about to get to that. So you have all your stuff, you're, you think you're ready to go on the boat, but you don't. Do you have life jackets for everybody on board? That is mandated probably across all 50 states, if I'm not sure, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't think I am. It's mandated across all 50 states that anyone on board must have a life jacket or a life jacket present for everyone on board. Um, and they will ask you to show whether they're on you or not. You have to show a life jacket for everybody. In most cases, once you get to a certain footage of boats, then you're required to have a throw cushion or a throw ring as well, like with a bass boat. 17 foot and over, in the state of Florida, you're required to have a throw cushion as well as a, a life jacket for every man on board. If you have a fire extinguisher on that boat, where is that located? And if you don't have one, you better buy not one, maybe two. Because fire in a boat's worse than you can have. And you, if you're on the water... And the one fire extinguisher don't work. What the hell does it hurt to buy two? So put two on your boat. Um, just like bilge pumps. I would highly recommend putting in two bilge pumps. If you have the room and the space, buy a Y connector, hook the two hoses together, and let the both of them go out the outflow. I would highly recommend that because if one goes down, you got another one to pump you out. So uh, depending on whether or not you're going offshore, if you go offshore, then you're required to have fire 12-gauge uh, flares. You're also required to have stick flares on board signal for help so there's a lot of things like you said in safety wise a whistle An air horn. everybody on board is supposed to have a whistle for, on their life jacket <whistles> that you can whistle for help uh, an air horn or a horn it doesn't have to be an air horn but you do have to have a horn on board I can have both a canned air horn and a burp, 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 regular horn on the boat not a clue um, not a clue fishing happy Friday I hope you had an awesome week. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. Cheers, my friend. So, here's another thing you may want to think of. Uh, what about a toolkit? What if you break down on the water? What about jumper cables? What about a jumper box of some kind that you can plug in and just jump to start the damn boat? Um, extra spark plugs. Things like that, that just things that may just go bad. Um, navigation lights. Do your nav lights work? Do they have nav lights on the boat? If they don't have nav lights, when it gets dark, you have to have a red and a green in the front and a white in the back if you have a motor running. Uh, if you're not moving and you're anchored up, you can have a, a white in the rear with no red and white in the front because you're not moving, you're not navigating, you're anchored up. So... Getting, like I said, getting a boat and having a you boat. You can use glow sticks. If you you could also use glow sticks if you're in a pinch, which we, we've done that. Uh, the bow light didn't work. We hung two glow sticks off the front. Um, but not the ideal thing to do. So know all these safety things before you ever put your boat in the water. Now you have your boat. You have all your safety gear. And this could vary from state to state. Your state could require... Uh, other things like uh, kill switches that, you know, has a leash that attaches to your your PFD. You clip it on there, and it clips onto your throttle of your boat. And if you get pulled out the boat, they, it's going to shut the engine off. Um, that's a very good thing to have. I like the, they also have wristband ones now you can get that are run via Bluetooth. So if you or any of your passengers falls out the boat, it'll stop the boat. Um, great things to have. Because, like, you know, I'm sure we've all seen the videos of the boat. It just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, not cool for the Kyle boat owner. says, I put a whistle in my life jacket and keep an air horn in the boat. Smart move. Very smart move. Also, leave a float plan, guys. If you're going to go out on very the water, important. very important to leave a float plan with somebody. If, you, if you're going out Rattle and you're... Rattle traps. Yeah. Rattle trap. Francis and Curtis. Happy Friday, family. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Hope you're having an amazing weekend. Cheers. By the way, guys, just to repeat it, if you guys want to be a Friday night sponsor of the channel, what we're doing is we're having mixed drinks on the Friday night. So if you have a mixed drink that your channel would like to be part of sponsor. or sponsor, uh, you can send us it via PayPal. Go to paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors. Make your donation. 
drop it in the comment below the recipe. and give us the recipe of what your donation is, whether it's rum and coke, whether it's tonight's drink is a pina colada, which has Sailor Jerry's and some store-bought uh, pina mix. After five, so after five outdoors, happy Friday, family. So if your channel wants to come up and be the channel sponsor of the Friday broadcast, let us know. Um, drop it in the comments, paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors, or the PayPal email is infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. And yes, you'll be recognized throughout the program. Tonight's channel sponsor is Infantry Outdoors. We picked this up, but we do have a channel sponsoring here in a few weeks we uh, upcoming. We have two channels sponsoring. So if you guys want to become a channel sponsor of your drink of choice, PayPal, get a hold of me, or if, you know, you can write to me, whatever you guys want to do. You know how it works uh, by now anyway. And you'll be the sponsor. We'll recognize you. We'll talk about your channel and all that good sort of stuff. So. Back to boat safety. We got our boat. We got all the crap we need. We got all the safety stuff we need. It's time to go take the boat out in the water. Oh, yeah. Gonna take the boat out in the water. Ronnie Clue says, I have a lot in my boat. Toolkits, spare parts, whistles, kill switch, fire extinguishers, life jackets, throw floats, jump box, extra battery powered lights, oars, which we didn't, which we forgot, can, air horn, and a foam charger. Well, see, oars in my case, I mean, it would kind of work. I have a push pole. Um, not oars, but I have a push pole that we use and a trolling motor. So that kind of makes up for the oars. But oars, um, though I've paddled in a 18 foot cabin boat back we to the dock it in a sand with bar. oars. <laughs> we pulled it out. Uh, of the we got it stuck in a sandbar. We've, I mean, I've done a lot of my boat. I've had like <laughs> boat probably 10 years, more than that, probably 13 years. Somewhere around there. We've had a boat for a long time. So, like I said, we're at the point now. We're at the ramp. We're going to get ready to go. You're going to unstrap your boat. Now, this is where I talk about routines. So, captains and wannabe captains in the future, get yourself in a routine. You get out the truck. You are going to... Uh, I well, This is what I do. I undo my back straps of the rear of the boat. I lift and unlock my safety from my motor. So that the motor can now go up and down electrically. Um, I put the butt plug in. <laughs> right there before I get on the ramp. Close or here. at the ramp. Flo, my brother. How you doing? Happy Friday, man. I hope you have an amazing one. I uh, love you, brother. Really appreciate everything. And uh, give me a call. We need to get together, man. We really do. Happy Friday. Going Cheers. to bed. Getting on the lake early. Well, thanks for stopping in, brother. Really appreciate it. So yeah, don't be like Shiner Guy and get there and put the butt plug in the wrong hole. This all comes back to knowing your boat and knowing what the holes are in the back of your boat and what they're meant for. All boats that have live wells have them. Uh, mo all, most boats have a bung hole not a clue in, in them. I guess Flo and so, not a clue are fishing in the morning together. Oh nice, guys. Have a good one and, and catch them up for me. I wish I could be there with you. <clears throat> so, like I was not saying... Not a clue says, mine's a 20-foot pontoon and I have a trolling motor as well, but always have... Good to have an oar. Of course. I agree with that 100% not a clue. And pontoon boats are really cool because, uh, you know, they can they can do pretty much everything. They can go in skinny water. Um, they're really not going to fucking sink at Oh, all. not a clue says, no, I'm so, going to see him in his live. I guess he's... Uh, oh, you're going to catch live. him on a live stream? Tomorrow, he's going to live doing fishing. So, you know, depending on what you're going to do... Uh, you could bass fish off of a bass off of a uh, pontoon. You could snook fish, tarpon fish. Now, this is in Florida, mind you. Um, you could do a lot of things in a pontoon boat. I think they're really cool. My wife wants one. Um, I just for the type of it, for the time being, we don't really need one. But it may come up here. You know, now that I'm up here in North Florida. But um, I mean, I have a kayak. I love my kayak. Go out there, get by myself, and just fish. Uh, Take it out in the ocean and just paddle. It's amazing. So, excuse me. But again, with all of these boats, whether it's a kayak, canoe, um, a boat, a john boat, an air boat, a submarine, you need to have all your stuff in order. But when you get to the boat ramp, 
like I said, back to that routine thing. Get out the truck. Start at the back of the boat. Undo your straps. Undo your motor lift. Put in your butt plug, shiner guy, in the right hole. Don't put it in the in or out for your live well. Put it in the bung hole. All right? Now, moving up. Put your key in the ignition. Make sure everything's good to go. Back the boat down the ramp. Now, where we live in Florida, some ramps are steep, some ramps aren't. So I leave the front hook and safety chain, or I just leave the front hook. You can unhook the safety chain at this point. When we're about to put the boat in the water, we get out and we unhook the front <laughs> of the boat, back down the boat, push the boat out, and Bob is your uncle. Alright? Just make sure you put that butt plug in. And make sure you put the butt plug in the right hole, otherwise she's not going to like it. And she's going to sink on you. So. See, this is what makes me want the pontoon. Not inclusive. They love the pontoon. Very versatile. I bass fish and catfish. And then I pull the wakeboard and tubes when it's playtime. See what I'm saying? See, that's... And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a pontoon boat. But I was tournament bass fishing. I needed a bass boat. Not inclusive. Shiner needs a pontoon. No butt plug. Left out loud. <laughs> yeah, right? Nothing to get wrong there. But see, that's, that all goes to show you guys what I'm saying. You know, somebody that, sh you know, Rob knows his stuff, okay? We all know Rob knows his stuff. But he got a new boat, and he got overly excited, and he didn't know his boat before he got on the water. You need to walk stem to stern, front to back of that boat, from port to starboard, from fucking end to end, and know every inch of that boat. Where does this go? Where does that go? Uh, what hole is this for? What hole is that for? Put some water in the water hose in the live well. Run the live well. See what the hell it does. Pump out the live well. See what that does. This is important stuff because when you get out on the water, it, that's not the time to figure things out when your boat's sinking. Now, Clue says, yeah, you don't tournament bass fish in a pontoon unless you want to get lapped off the lake. And let me tell you something, dude. I would. I would do it in a heart. If that's all I had and I really wanted a tournament fish... They say a boat. They don't say it has to be a $100,000 bass boat. They say a boat, son, a boat. And if your boat, you can't catch fish on your boat, then Make you Make a makeshift live well. It ain't, ain't the boat. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It ain't the boat. The boat don't mean a damn thing. It's a fisherman. It's how you hold the rod. Yeah, it's an angle and a dangle, baby. What? John Ames is here. John Ames, man. Happy Friday. John Ames gets to them. If y'all ain't seen John Ames' channel, he gets to them amazing footage of nature and stuff like that. Happy Friday, brother. Cheers. Hope you're doing well. Hope you and the family are doing great. May God bless you. Thank you for the support. Very true, very true. It's like people that think you got to buy a $1,000 fishing rod to catch fish. That's total crap. Fish don't care what, what the hell you rod you use. They don't care how expensive your lure was, how much you paid for this brand name brand or line. No. All they care about is action and want to eat any fish, any fish out there. It's just movement, action, color, sparkle. Like, ooh, what's that? Let me eat it. You know, that's all it is. Be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, and, be at the, and know where the hell the fish are. That's all. That's all it comes down to. So, this is exactly right. Yep. So, back to the boat safety thing, guys. We've covered a lot. Now we're going to cover on the water. If you did not listen to me back at the beginning or you just came in late, boater safety courses are important. The reason boater safety courses are important is because they will tell you, depending on where your water, uh, body of water that you're navigating, is, is how you're going to navigate the water. You um, have things called channel markers. You have speed zones, idle speeds, um, no wake zones. You have manatee down here in Florida, or up here even down here. In Florida, we have manatee zones. Certain times of the year, you can't go but idle speed. Um, so depending on where you live, again, will determine on where and how fast you can go, when you can go fast. Down where I used to live in South Florida, we had designated areas that you could go skiing or inner tubing or speed zones. And we had every, most of the rest of it, you couldn't. You couldn't do that. Um, up here in North Florida, I have yet to check it out, but I believe the lakes and stuff like that, we can intertube and stuff like that. Um, so 
just know your know the safety laws, know your area, and know what you know red, right, green return means. Um, and if you don't know that, we'll go take a boater safety class. I'm not going to teach it to you tonight. But red, right, green return when you're going in and out. Um, also, your water depths. Know where you're going. You don't want to hit a sandbar. You, is there tide conditions? <laughs> High tide is at what time? Low tide is at what time? Your boat might get you stuck on low tide because you came in on high tide. Speaking of stuck, now it says laugh out loud. I beached a 24-foot center, con con center console off the coast a few months ago. Laugh out loud. Oops. Coast Guard Oops. happened to see me do it and pulled me off. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Coast Guard will help you out a lot. You know, Coast Guard's Especially, pretty good. I'm sure they had a good laugh at it. Um, if you're going to go anything in the oceans or anything like you said where Coast Guard, the word Coast Guard would be involved, another safety feature I would highly recommend that I put on all of my ocean-bound boats was a VHF radio with, an, with a, the biggest whip antenna you could put on your vessel. The reason for this is they come with this little button nowadays. It's a distress feature. If something happens, you flip up the tab and you hit the red button and it will alert for help for you send a beacon. you know and and my wife and i we've done a lot of crazy shit in the boat uh we've had a lot of fun in the boat but at the end of the day to be able to call for help is paramount okay um you'll get once you get so far off the florida coast cell phones don't work and i'm not talking far people i'm talking you know four five six seven football fields off the shoreline because that's not an area cell phones target. There's not people using cell phones there. So why is a cell phone signal or cell phone carrier going to give a damn out in the lake, out in the ocean, out in the channel? You understand where I'm getting at? So if you're in a big body of water, Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Superior, any of those big bodies of water, your cell phone carrier don't give a damn about the middle of the lake. If you get reception around the bank, hell, you're lucky. But same thing in Florida. For us, the coast, once you hit the body of water, the cell phone carrier don't care about what's past the water. So if you're out there in your boat and you're having a good time, your cell phone may not work. Monica says, oh, yeah, we were small laughing, and we could hear them talking about us on the radio. Laugh, I laugh. It was the low tide that got me. Went back in where I came out, but different time of day. Yep. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. Hey, listen, I went out on the same 17-foot on a supermoon. And if you guys don't know nothing about a supermoon, in Florida at least, it really messes with the tides. So if you were to have a low tide, you're going to have an extremely low tide. If you're going to have a high tide, it's going to be an extremely high tide because the moon is so close because that's why they call it a supermoon. So we go out on the boat. Um, inner tubing, having a good time in the same bay that we always go into. Never had a problem in my life. We go out there to finish out the day, take one last run. Everybody's having a drink. All right, let's head back in. We start the boat, put the boat in gear, and bam! The water level went down so low that we had to lift up the boat and walk it like four football fields in a place we inner tube that's like 16 feet deep. Every, just about every weekend, we were walking the boat out of because the tide was so low. The channels in Intercoastal were actually, you could see the V that was carved out for the ships to go through. I mean, it was, to get a boat on a trailer was a nightmare. So, the ocean, you really got to know more than, than freshwater because you have tides you have to worry about. You got to get the incoming tide, the slack tide, the outgoing tide. And if you're a big vessel, then that can really play to your disadvantage. So, I see comments popping up. What do we got? No, everyone was sitting out after five is going out for his water cut opener in the morning. Sweet. Not a clue says, wow, that's low. Yeah, it was bad. It's pretty scary. Um,. So, yeah, know your waterways, too, guys. Like, do your homework, look on a map, know where you're going to go fish. Know your tide schedule. Leave a schedule. float pan. Uh, know a tide schedule. When is high tide? When is low tide? Know what those things mean if you're going to go out in the ocean. Uh, don't go far in the ocean if you 
you know, if you're new at it, I, if you can't swim it, don't go out that far. Because if the boat sinks, that's exactly what you're doing. If you have a larger vessel, keep one of them life rafts. They're only like, you know, this big. After five says, got my first bear. Nice, dude. We're going to have a drink to that. Congrats, man. Congrats, congrats. That's my dream animal. My dream hunt is to get a bear, for those of you who don't know by now. Flo's bear is going up behind us. You'll see Flo the bear coming soon. But cheers and congrats on the bear. With a handgun. Oh, you're the man. <laughs> how close were you to get Damn, a handgun? Damn, how close were you to bear with a bear and what kind of handgun? Like, that's crazy. It's just badass is what that is. <laughs> That's just straight gangster. Hey, Bear, come here. No, 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 C come here. Stand up real quick. Bam! No more bear. That's just awesome. That's my dream animal to hunt. Honestly, God, guys. I hear you, daughter. Now who says after five is a man. I'm telling you, dude. I capped the freaking bear with a handgun. I'll take you out. I'm going to have to. Mommy's going to take you right now. Um, after five says, at closest eight feet, I shot him at 21 yards with a 44 mag. You're the man. Stared a bear in the face and shot him. How many rounds out. did it take? That's what I'm curious. 44 mag against a bear. How many rounds? It wasn't one. I, you, you, if you tell me one, you're full of shit. I got to call I mean, that. I mean... What, head, one no. shot with a forty four mag, I don't think you're stopping a bear. I just don't think so. After five says one, he ran twelve yards and probably they drop after the twelve yards. That's freaking amazing, dude. I hope one day That's awesome. to get a bear. Yep. Flo the bear coming soon, right here to the wall. So send me a bear, and I'm going to put it on that wall. I'm going to make a nice frame and everything. Hey, and by the way, guys, if you have mounts, let me throw this out there. You see the house is coming together, the cabin vibes. Um, After five says, check the video. We got the, the cabin vibes going. If you guys have any mounts that you really don't want anymore and you want to send our way to display around the place, um, let me know, man, because I would love to display you guys' stuff. And even, even better, like what I'm doing with Flo's Bear, I'm going to make a little plaque that says where it was done at and who killed it and all that stuff. So any of your mounts to come, I'll get like a little plaque or something made to go with it to say which YouTuber sent it, where they got it from, what year it was, was, har you know, was it harvested. And I, I want to really like have mounts around here. I hope to put some of my own up here. But if you guys have any that you're honestly not using... Uh, or you don't want, I would be happy to take them, uh, just decorate the cabin, as you guys see, and uh, just liven up the live stream, so, yeah, and don't forget as well, guys, if you want to be a channel sponsor for the, the, the upcoming videos, and you like to buy the drink for the evening, we will mention you throughout the broadcast, of course, as much as we have a drink, we'll be saying thank you to so-and-so for tonight's drink of this and that, um, so, and you have to do include with your drink, Everything that goes along with your drink. You can send the money via PayPal at paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors or our PayPal email is infantry outdoors at yahoo.com. So there you go, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Business out the way. Sorry, no banners tonight. Banners yeah, no tonight. banners tonight because uh, we're not doing the stream yard thing tonight. We're just straight broadcasting. Um, the furniture kind of threw us off. We had everything all set up. We had a studio nice. Uh, but getting furniture kind of like took After away from the After five says infantry, email me your address. I'll send you something. Email you at your address? Email you our address. You have my email? Send me an email. And I'll respond to it. That's the easiest way. Infantry Sorry, outdoors at yahoo.com. Yeah, we, we have for you... I hate saying it that way, but it's easier for you to send me an email and I'll just reply back After with my phone number. Says, okay. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Life is easier with blind people if you don't ask us to type. And here's, let me ask y'all people something. 
We spent how many years of our lives getting to this point technologically where I can look at you, you can see me. Well, I can't look at you. But you guys can see me. We can chat. We can interact and do this. Okay? Talk on the phone. Hey, after five, what's up, brother? How you doing? Great. Awesome. From a cell phone. Why the hell does everybody type? I don't get it. It's so much easier just to go. Hey, bro. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to get a burger? Yeah. All right. Meet me down the street. I'll meet you at the burger joint. All right. Bye. That's a whole lot faster than. I don't get it. Judith. Happy Friday, Judith. I hope you're having an amazing night. We love your support. We love you. Thank you for coming in. May God bless you. Hope you're having an amazing night and a great weekend. Happy Friday. Yeah. So. Don't forget we got the merch, guys. Infantry Outdoors t-shirts on Amazon. You guys can pick them up. Um, all that good sort of stuff is linked at our website, infantryoutdoors.com. Um, boat safety, I think we pretty much covered it all. What time is it? How long we've been going live? 27 minutes. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be the shortest live stream ever. Because uh, I don't know what else to cover. We talked about it already, you know. Pre, pre buying a boat Nicholas all the way up to launch the boat. Yeah. Nick, my brother, Henry, Henry, my buddy. Happy Friday, family. Hope you guys are having a good one. I hope Henry is stomping daddy in the fishing and hunting world. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming in. Cheers. Henry's my buddy. Hundred percent. Got to give a big shout out to Henry. Um, yeah, so the boat safety is basically done. What y'all want to chat about? I want to take her. What y'all want to chat about? What y'all want to chat about? What does it say? Do, 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 Nick. Hey, bro. See, now I got to feel the chat because the producer's walking away. Hey, brother. Time. I'm at work, but I'll tell. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. I know he'll enjoy that. So what are we going to talk about now, guys? Boat safety is already done with. And it's only 41 minutes into the broadcast. Oh, how many people does it tell me we got watching? It says that there are nine of you in here. One of them is probably my wife. And I got 12 thumbs up. Yeah. So, what's going on in the wonderful world of my friends? Judith, how are you? What's going on with you? Anything new? Talk to me, family. What do we got going on? Again, I want to apologize for not being on last week. We got new furniture in the house. Um... And we're trying to figure out how to do the live stream thing with the furniture because where the furniture is, the broadcast studio stuff went. Um, but this is where, I guess this is working for tonight. Check out the lamps, man. Deer, deer antler lamps. I got couches. Uh, we got an outdoor fire pit. Maybe next week. What do you guys think about next week? We do it at the fire pit outside. I got one of those fire tables. They put a propane bottle underneath and the fire comes out on top. <laughs> And you get to hang out by that. What do you guys think? You want to hang out by the fire pit tomorrow, next Friday? We could do that. I um, also got a new toy in the mail today. I'm going to try my hand at smelt, or not smelting, but melting. Uh, I got a foundry so that I can melt my aluminum soda cans and turn them into bars and things like that and ingots for recycling. Uh, what does it say? Do -do -do -do. Oh, oh, crap. My last video, I took Henry to a farm. I have another one coming out. Henry tells a campfire story. That's cool. I want to see that one. I tried fishing the other day. Nothing good. All right. Well, at least you're out. I haven't been out yet. I haven't been out in a minute. Doing great. Glad, Judah says. Uh, glad the weather got cooler. Been getting ready for trapping season. 
Judith, that's awesome. Hey, listen, Judith, if you wanted these animals, I'm going to bring this up again. Um, you guys can see, like I said, with the furniture, Flo the Bear is going to go back behind me on this wall. If you have any mounts that you would like to send or donate to the cabin, I'm going to put a little plaque, or even if you want to put your own plaque of the animal stuffed, uh, you know, or mounted, or whatever you call it, and you want to put, like, you know, Judith and your name, when it was killed, and where it was killed, um, that would be really cool if you guys by any chance have that, and you're not using it, or you just want to donate it, I don't care if it's a cougar, a big ass bear, uh, a little duck, just, you know, we want to have that hunting fishing vibes here at the house, so that when you guys do have the opportunity um, to come and collab and work here, and you have a place to stay here, you'll be able to be like, oh, you know, that's Flo the Bear. Oh, that's, you know, the duck somebody sent, and all that kind of stuff, so. All right, Rattle Trap Fishing. We are back. Welcome back, Curtis and Francis. And don't forget, too, guys, Friday nights, if you want to be the drink sponsor of the evening, if your channel wants to get a uh, shout-out throughout the whole broadcast, you can sponsor the drink of the night. And all you have to do is send us the funds via PayPal. We'll go to the store. We'll buy all of the ingredients and make it the way that you tell us to. And we'll have it here on the Friday night. Um, just please make sure it's something that's going to be enjoyable. Uh, I can tell you right now, no peach, nothing. I don't do no peach, nothing. So don't do that. <clears throat> but anything else other than the peach uh, or that licorice taste, anise or whatever the hell it is, I don't do those two flavors. But I will give anything a try. So we got Rattle Trap, Nick Pouillard Outdoors. How are you? Judith, that is cool. Hey, Rattle Trap, doing good. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, and another thing, too, I'm going to start doing is when I collaborate with you guys, we're going to have a wall of fame in my office where, like, I've got pictures with Shiner Guy, I got pictures with Flow Rider Hillbilly, C Pro Outdoors, Swamp Stalker Outdoors. Uh, Monster Mike Fishing, um, I have pictures with uh, the Iguana Man, It's Just Ralph, I have pictures with, what's his name, oh it escapes me, um, oh my god, Zach Ketchum, that's it. So I've got a lot of celebrity photos that I want to get put up on the wall, and in the future as we get together and do things together as well, you're going to be on a celebrity wall as well, you guys. So, you know, like I said, I want it to be that kind of vibes when you come by or when you come here. So, all right, I got to catch up with the chat. Uh, doing good. After five, I will email you, sir. I got to get up at 345 and go chase ducks. That's awesome, dude. If you get one, stuff it and send it to me. Take care. And God bless you. And all in the chat. Thanks, after five. After five, I got to make you a moderator. I don't know if I can do it from my phone. But I'm going to make you a moderator, bro. Um, hold on. It won't let me from my phone. So, uh, next time we're in together, I'll make you. I don't know why you're not a mod. But after five, have an awesome one. Good luck on the duck. Get one for your boy. Swamp Stalker, hope y'all. Have a great night. Got to get up early tomorrow. Shannon, call me, bro, tomorrow. Let's just, you know, check in. I hope you guys are all right, bro. I hope everything's going good. Um, not a clue fishing. Night after five. After five outdoors. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Hey, we appreciate you, family. You have a good night. Rattle trap to Nick. We went fishing yesterday morning. I ain't been fishing in a hot minute, guys. It's just been crazy with uh we got Brandon in homeschool for right now in virtual learning. Um and little Logan here driving us nuts and then the wife is working on top of that. Uh things ain't exactly as close as they used to be. But thank God on the plus side, God has blessed us financially. Uh I was able to to collect my unemployment. And they gave me back pay, so I was able to get caught up on a bunch of things. And uh, that's kind of where how I was able to get furniture. So, I will be getting out more. I will be able to do more things. And I still have the catch and cook for the catfish coming up. I bought a special seasoning 
uh, from a Florida based company that I want to try. Um, and like Swamp Stalker and I talked about before, uh, I'm going to start doing some Dutch oven cooking in the fire pit and things like that. I, it's just been tough, man, with the kids being home all the time. And I want to do things around the house and try to get things done too and make YouTube videos. So, Mike, I appreciate you calling and checking in on me. Um, you know, buddy's like, hey, I ain't heard from nothing from you. So, I appreciate that, dude. Um, but, yeah. So, what else y'all want to talk about? Anything? Anybody? How about this? What should next week's, what should next week's topic be? What is next week's topic? And does anybody want to be the sponsor for next week's program? Let me know if you want to drop a bottle. Uh, just don't kill me. I mean, look, I've already had this cup, which is pretty huge. A pina colada tonight. And I'm pretty... Yeah. Drink, 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 everybody. Drink, drink, drink. What I say, infantry? Drink, everybody. Drink, everybody. Drink, 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 drink. Boom, 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 boom. Down to three people in the chat. All right, well, who's left in the chat so I know who the hell I'm talking to? Because if not, I just cut it off tonight and move on to next week. Pit. I had a feeling it was going to be a slow night tonight. It wasn't put out there and, like, any of that kind of stuff. But who's left in the chat? Somebody drop a damn comment so I know who's left. Oh, there we go. Who do we got? All right, Coyote, you're here. Sweet. Coyote, my buddy. Coyote, that, you should send me a coyote, Coyote. Give, give me one of them stuffed coyotes and send it to me. And we'll name it Coyote, the Coyote. Judith says, I'm here. Nicholas says, thinking of a topic. Okay, cool. Coyote Trump says, we're here. All right, I appreciate it. I just didn't know who was left. You know, coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. It's like having sex on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so what topic should we talk about? What topic should we talk about? Yeah, next week. Next week, for show, what? But Coyote, what do you think about sending me a Coyote? Then I can name it Coyote and, and you know, have them out. I'll put it here by the fire. That would be really cool. Or a Bobcat or something like that. Or what do y'all call a Mountain Lion, Bobcat, uh, whatever the name it's got. It's got like 10, 10 different names. Even a raccoon. You give me a raccoon, like, in a really cool pose? Ah, that would be really cool. Or some duck. After fives, you're hitting ducks in the morning. Get a nice duck. Send me a duck mounted on a, on a wooden plank flying through the air. Don't think I'm playing, man. I love that stuff. Nicholas says transitioning uh, to up activities outdoors will be cool. Yeah, and for me, it'll be a first because I'm up here in North Florida now. I'm not down there in South Florida where there is no transition. It's just <laughs> freaking hot. We can do, like, so, hiking in the fall. Yeah, we got have, like, fall. Well, listen, this will be the first time where I get to see, like, fall leaves, where I get to see four seasons because in Florida, down where really I'm from, it is stuff. freaking hot all the time. You go to South Florida... It's hot. You ain't missing shit. It's hot. Right, so I'll have a lot more time. time to do that next week. It's my last week of security. Coyote. I'm going to just give you this pointer. Because I, I know I read what was going on and, and all that good sort of stuff. Don't. Uh, I don't want to say this without like, telling you what to do. So don't take it like I'm telling you what to do. You know, you're a man, you fought for this country, which I thank you for, and you do what you want. But don't quit your job to do YouTube until YouTube is paying you money that is equal to or more than your current status. Because this, my wife will tell you, we're going on three years doing this. And, and I look at some YouTubers that have 600,000 subscribers in three years. I don't know how they did it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But... I don't care. I know eventually I'm going to get there. But don't quit your day job to do this. Remember we talked about the other day on the phone, and I don't want to get into it in case you never who's listening. But the people that are on YouTube that we discussed, you don't want to... What 
am I trying to say? Put them on blast, I guess. So, don't stop working unless you're able to. And focus on YouTube when the time is right. Because YouTube still is going to be there. We hope. You never know. They may shut YouTube down tomorrow. You all never know that. It's a private platform. They can do what they want. We're just along for the ride. Yeah, Red said I don't get paid to do security. I got the VA. Oh, okay. As long as you're good, brother. I just don't I want to see nobody do nothing stupid, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to get money from YouTube, and it, it doesn't work that way. Even when you get money from YouTube, you're not getting money from YouTube. So, I want to see everybody succeed. I want to see everybody get money from YouTube <laughs> because we all work hard. Every, every day that you go out and make one freaking video deserves something, so... Keep that in mind. Every minute of your time on this broadcast is worth money to somebody somewhere at some time. Every video you make. So, don't sell yourself short, guys. You guys are awesome. You guys create things that people want to see. And uh, the rest will come. All good right, things so come I in can't time. get monetized because being a disabled vet. You can get monetized as a disabled vet. Sure you can. Why not? That'd be stupid if you couldn't. I mean, so what? Why it's not? Like being a if rape. you make, okay, you can make up to a That's certain racism. amount of money. No, but he, he's like me on disability. You can make up to a certain amount of money, but then they take your benefits away. Well, once you make this certain amount of money, you're going to make more than that because YouTube is a numbers game. Once you start making something, it grows exponentially. One video becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. Same with your views. The more videos that you put out, the more people are going to see you. Once you monetize, right, so the videos are going to continue making about, money. Right, so we will talk on the phone about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk on the phone about that. But I get you. I have a plat uh, 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 an area, gray area with my disability. I'm allowed, allowed to make so much money before they take my benefits away. Well, thankfully for me, the business end of it's in the wife's name. So the wife can make all the damn money that she wants, so I just don't make any money. Um, I'm completely fine with that. So once we get to where the wife doesn't have to work anymore and this is paying enough for us to get by, then I'll be able to start saying, hey, I'm flying out to go trap coyotes with coyotes. Hey, I'm flying out here to uh, after five outdoors to go get duck in the morning. I'm going over here to this person. Uh, you know, all of this stuff. I'm going to go over here to Trapper Jays and I'm going to go frog hunting. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know once I'm at that plat that platform of my life, I will be able to do it. But baby steps. All good things come to those who wait. Patience is a virtue. You need to be patient. You know. You don't just get a job and start as the president or start as the boss. You have to start as the, the little piss on worker and work your way up. You have to learn your craft, learn your skill, learn your trait. Just like boating safety. Like I, I talked about, we'll go back around to the full circle. Um, before you buy a boat, start learning about a boat. Take boat safety courses. Get a boating license. Get insurance if you have to have the boat. Because you're going to need it. Here's another thing for you. They have this thing in Florida called Tow Boat USA or Boat USA. Get one of those damn things. Because if you need help, you call them. They come out and they help you. Yeah, $75 or whatever the hell it is that you have to pay is worth it. It's well worth it the first time you get stuck. Or the first time you get broke down and you can't fix it on the water. Towboat USA will get you back. So, with that said, we still haven't got a topic. we got five people in the chat. We've been on for just about an hour. Do -do -do -do. I wouldn't want to be doing security. Race trapping and we won't. Yeah. You're not missing anything else. No, okay. Well, guys, that, I'm going to let it go for like a whole two minutes, but my two-minute ending will probably wrap it up here in an hour. I hope you guys had a good one. I want to thank you all for coming in tonight. Don't forget if you want to be next week's sponsor and sponsor a bottle or sponsor a drink for the evening, uh, you can hit us up at the paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors or the PayPal email is infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. You can always write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com as well as check us out at infantryoutdoors.com. whole lot of that crap. Holy cow. So, Judith, everybody, Nick, Coyote, guys, thank you so much for coming in. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I uh, hope that wherever you are, 
it is an amazing Rattle one. Rattletrap says you're welcome. Rattletrap, Francis and Curtis, thank you guys. Have an awesome night. But yeah, if you want to get your channel boosted next week and be the channel sponsor, uh, let me know. For those that have my phone number, you can always just call me. Um, you know how that goes. So with that said, we're going to end the broadcast. Thank you for joining us tonight discussing boat safety. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something. If you like to drop something in the comments, please feel free to drop it below. If you haven't subscribed by now, hit that button. Give us a thumbs up on the video. And until we meet again, I am the infantry, and I hope that this and all of my adventures inspires you to get outdoors. Everybody have a wonderful night. Be blessed. God bless y'all. Take care. Good night.